So this is the Volvo EX30 and this car that you see behind me starts from 33,795. This one here is the 42,045. This is the single motor extended range rear wheel drive. It has about 272 horsepower, 0 to 60 miles, 62 miles per hour in 5.3 seconds, a range of 295 miles. And there's several models that they do. Uh, they also do a twin motor performance version with 420 brake horsepower. I was going to give that a try, but unfortunately I think it's run out of battery. Um, that's quite a bit more expensive, but you get this one. You also get the one below this at £33,000, and that gets a smaller battery and stuff like that. So I'm at a SMMT driving day. I've got a short time with the cars. I'll put the rest of the spec all on the screen. But we'll have a look around the car, and we'll look at the practicality, and then we'll take it for a quick drive. A brown car. So they've got very sort of plain, clean, crisp, uh, very clear sort of uh, space on the front there. Um, look at the logo. I mean, it's pretty much, there's no grill now. It's just a Volvo logo with a camera in it. And then you've got these sort of hammer, they're not even hammer headlights anymore. Uh, I think that's maybe reserved for the Polestar range, but they used to make a big deal out of that. I suppose you can still see the hammer motif in this bit here. So you can see that the lights aren't really flashing in real life. That's just what the camera is doing. Very interesting design on the wheels as well. Oh, go the other way. Wheels. And looks like a clamshell type of bonnet. Interesting that. So it goes all the way around to do that. Of course, you don't... I mean, I suppose there's a front there because there's no engine. EX30. Quite a large C pillar on there. Look at the strakes on the rear lights. Again, they're not really flickering. It's just on the camera. But they're also up here as well. So, how do you open the boot of this car? There you go, I found the button. Hidden away that button there. But, um, so, let's have a look. So you've got pretty deep boot. Oh, I think it's got a false floor, but the floor is on the lower setting now. That gives you more space in here. Underneath here, you have a very slight amount of, oh, let me go the other way. Very slight amount of space there. Just underneath there, and then of course being a Volvo, you have of course got, oh, sorry, you have of course got the first aid kit, split folding seats, uh, there's hooks and stuff as well, that's pretty much it. What's all this? Can you see that? This gives you the actual dimensions and uh, telling you what will fit in the car. That's useful for owners to take a snapshot and keep that with them. So we can close it from there. Right. I like that. Very clean, very crisp, small window there. Let's see what it's like in the back. Okay, it's a little bit tight in here. That's very interesting. See the shape of this? See how the door handle is kind of suspended there? Although it is actually connected. It's deceptive actually. It's an optical illusion if you like. Look at that. That's so nicely done. It's really classic actually. That's a proper old handle there. A little bit too easy to grab, methinks. Um, that's really tight. So again, when I, when I get in the front, we'll see where I am in relation to that seat. But for me, that's too tight. So this is too small for me. Um, these are the switches for the window. Interesting, that. Because there uh, there no, there's nothing on the door. So the switches are here, plus next to the uh, USBs, if you can make out there. Then you've got access to the same compartment. You go down. You've got access to the same compartment that you have in the front. Look at that. You can actually do that. Oh, you can actually take it out. And then you've got more down there. How weird. Interesting. No pockets on the back of here. No armrest here. There's a kind of canvas and then leather arrangement here. Massive. Can I pull, pull this up? Massive roof, glass roof, all the way around. And then, put that back to the center, there you go. Time to get in the front, see what that's like. Oh, that does look nice, but this is too tight for me. Check this out, okay, here we are. 
it's an interesting design here actually look at this this is very um let me go down a little bit look at that so this is very clean crisp unusual uh almost furniture like but look at this look at that look at that arrangement there on the one hand it's delightfully exquisitely made on the other hand i guess that lights up at night it feels a bit delicate which for a volvo it shouldn't and it probably will be quite oh it goes up and down as well it'll probably be quite robust but that's interesting this is a brush sort of feel about that this is softer sort of feel um hard though square steering wheel look at that with buttons on there and then the spokes i don't know what that one we well effectively it started the moment you sit it's bum operated so the moment that you sit it's ready to go so over here we've got some i have no idea what these are locks lock unlock and then we have um well I, I guess this is some ah here we go here we go so this is a cup holder there you go you oh, look at that arrangement so you've got two cup holders or you could pull them back and just use that or you could use the cup holder the key is in there you could push the whole thing back and you've got two settings for that and then you've got this massive space here which has also got the wireless charging as well and then under here you can actually um if i can move that down you can actually open that up so it's, and the usbs are down there so lots of nice little neat little touches there but there's no glove box so maybe that's where the compromise is that there is no glove box so instead you get all of these uh storage spaces including quite a deep storage space there and then of course you've got this big screen in the middle and again those little interesting little toggle uh controls there right let's take it for a drive oh sorry to interrupt are you enjoying the video well make sure you've punched the like button it helps Right, so I'll put my phone to charge down there. Let's see how long. So we just got this weird sort of stock here, which I think is in drive now. Are we in drive? How do I know if I'm in drive? Oh, I am in drive. I know I'm in drive because I'm moving. Ah, here we go. It's up here at the top. So the speed is there. Wow. So there's no heads up. The speed is there. This will be interesting. Let's give this a go then, shall we? And the, the, the mirrors, the door mirrors, feel completely rimless. Interesting little steering wheel there. Um, just like the uh, rear view mirror here is a full bleed. And the mirrors on the doors f appear to be the same. Completely full bleed all the way around to the end. There's a slight edging, that's about it. Not a huge car. So it's quite a compact thing. That makes sense. Hope you don't confuse the indicator with the gear selector. <laughs> oh, if it's your own car, then obviously you will know and you'll be used to that. Sun's come out, that's nice. So I'm on an SMMT driving day. Um, and uh, we have this road inside here that we can use to try it out. But uh, this wheel just feels a bit it feels like a yoke do you know what i mean i feel like i should drive it like a night rider style it's a bit weird this um again one of those things you get used to but what what is really hard to get used to is that there is no display in front of me there's no display the display is here so all my information here and it's actually literally showing the car it's detecting the lanes and it's showing the car on here And um, the speed is there, the speed limit is there, and the mile range is there. I think that's the mile range, 169 miles, 57% is showing me. The drive, uh, what, showing you what gear it's in there. Uh, obviously, it's got lane keep assist because the steering is tugging away. So, it's kind of odd. I feel like at least there should have been a heads-up display in this. It really needs to have a heads-up display. To have this here, let's go over the rumble strips. Uh, not too bad, actually. No, oh, here we go. They get rougher and rougher, these rumble strips. It's just for testing of the car. Uh, this is a test facility, so they do have these odd kind of tarmac uh, surfaces in order to be able to test the car. But um, I just find that's really awkward. And I don't know what this is for down here. I'm guessing that just shows you uh, any um, uh, warning signs or anything like warning lights and stuff probably will come up on there. But I'm not seeing anything. I mean, you indicated. Does the indicator come up anywhere? No, I don't know what I don't know what I'm indicating now. 
Does it come? It comes up on here. So again, even that comes up on here. So everything is on here, which is extraordinary. And I really feel that there should be something to tell you a little bit more in front of you. Because as a driver, that's kind of what I'm used to. I guess once it's your car, you'd probably stick it hard to this corner. A little bit of understeer, but holds on fine. It's a good turn in actually. Now it's sort of coming into its own, where it's showing that it's actually quite a nimble little thing. Um, so it's a compact SUV, family SUV, uh, city SUV, I suppose, or crossover, really. That sort of vehicle. You can punch it down here. Wow, there's quite a bit of body movement where it gets a little bit unsettled. So it's being thrown around as a small car. How are the brakes? Good, they're quite progressive. You don't have to jump on them or anything like that, but they're quite powerful, but they don't feel bitey. So they're very well judged. No understeer, no. Falls pretty tight actually, yeah, pretty good. The grip is good. It gripped well there. With steering, no feedback at all, and steering is a bit light, as well as being a bit odd to hold, but the movement required is not that much. So, on the brakes, turn in, there you go, and then on the throttle, straighten up a little bit. I mean, it's all fine. It's an experience that takes getting used to. But it's almost like they're reassessing, it's sort of, isn't this a very Tesla thing to do? to reimagine things and to try them in different ways or whatever. Feels a bit like that. But it all works though. So there you go. I mean, it's got a reasonable ride, could be better, very quiet, very refined, very smooth. Um, nice little SUV, feels really solid. Lots of interesting little touches, lots of things that you need to get used to. I really do miss not having a display in front of me. I think that's a mistake. Um, but it's something I guess you would get used to if you own the vehicle. Um, other than that, Interesting experience. Let me know what you think of the car in the comments below. I'll catch you all in the next video. Yo, it's caught the race, it's tales from the future's face. 13 stories gonna take it out of space. From Washington Canyon steep to Dubai's high rise. Secret lives, AI drives to the man who flies. Pedal to the metal in a 325. Race through time, keeping hope alive. Get your engines ready, rev it up for sure Quantum races, lessons at the finish line Fast-paced fiction will blow your mind Tech and turmoil, survival's the grind Get lost in the pages, see what you find Past predators haunt, tomorrow's man leads Dystopian dreams where the future feeds From India to the Middle East, stories collide Uncharted roads in this epic ride Jump in the driver's seat, feel the thrill Spinning through the cosmos, using that chill Words without real secrets to unfold In quantum races, legends are told Quantum races, lessons at the finish line Fast-paced fiction, I blow your mind Tack and turmoil, survival's the cry Get lost in the pages, see what you find Shout out time guys, thank you so much. Hey, if you enjoy my content, why not get involved? Buy me a coffee. You can do that at either of these links. Or if you're watching on YouTube, buy me a thanks or take out a membership. It all helps, it really does.